is the Fort County Redevelopment Commission meeting for Wednesday, March 31st, 2021, at 4 p.m. to order. Then for the food stand for the plant, Scott, I'm going to do this. 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 I'm Under item number 11, new business, it would be D, it would be resolution number 1-20-21. Right. I'll make that resolution. I'll make that. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Public comment. Public comment is now open. Anybody from the public? Anybody from the public? One at a time. Please do not rest. No. One at a time. There's nobody here. All those in uh, public comment is not closed. Communications, Mary Jane? Communications. You had information from the Redevelopment Association of Indiana regarding their annual Zoom meeting for election of officers and other sundry items. We contacted the auditor's office for the treasurer's report, worked with Sender and Company on the annual report, worked with Bailey, who sent us the Zoom credentials, and then worked with the uh, city attorney and the, or the county attorney, I apologize, or the RDC attorney. Let me try one more time. Three's the, three's the charm, I guess. And the RDC president re regarding the KID tip expenses, and then I sent you some information on the 2021 Rail Summit in July. And that's the end of your communications for the month of March. Thank you. Um, minutes? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Approve the minutes. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Treasurer's report. Treasurer's report in the uh, U.S. 421 allocation area number one tip, the balance after your March expenses is $398,351. U.S. 421 I-94 allocation area 2 TIF, after your March expenses, the ending balance is $85,416. The KIDC TIF, which has no expenses in March, the balance is $4,689. And the 39 North TIF has $64,536 after the um, March expenses. Great. Much pleasure. Motion to approve. Financial report. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Claims. Uh, as you stated, we have none for the KIDC uh, TIF, the 421 number one TIF, Thomas and Associates, February uh, professional services in the amount of 494. MCR Partners, March Professional Services in the amount of 5000 Harold Argus, February Legal Notice Publication in the amount of $14.04 for a total of $5,508.04. Motion to approve. Okay. We have a motion and a second by Rich. Rich Oh, by Rich? Yep. Thank you. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed? What? No, it was an eye. Oh, okay. All right. Aye, 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 aye. 30, 39 North, TIF, uh, MCR Partners, March Professional Services in the amount of 1000 Thomas & Associates, February Professional Services in the amount of $494, Freeman & Associates, March Legal Fees Services in the amount of $1,500, Harold Argus, February legal publication in the amount of $14.04 for a total of $3,008.04. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion and second. Is there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
So the total claims today paid was $8,516.08. Like yeah. Next item is old business, uh, 421.94, I-94, TIF project update, Matt Reardon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members. Brief update on 421.94. I will not spend much time here but to let you know that the developer is here. He's going to speak Vladimir Gans and going to talk about where their progress is at. And we're still literally uh, stuck in the pipe with what's going on there and their ability to move forward. So um, there's been information shared. I'm going to let Vladimir talk about it. But I'm going to circle back on this issue as we get to new topics, and it has to do with the ARP and the program funding associated with that allocated specifically for water, sewer, and broadband that have to do directly with this project. So I'm going to turn over to Vlad, and he's got the map and the whole time. Okay, before we put this up, a recap for me, Vladimir Gans, Bruce 121. you got to stay in front of the mic so people at home can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. Vladimir Gans, 421 uh, uh, Partners. So we had left off. Uh, many, many months ago, was that uh, in our pipeline had agreed and was allowing uh, uh, Love to do their development on the site and then uh, pave over the pipeline. They then came back and retraded that and said, wait a minute, for us to inspect our pipeline and to get access to keep up the uh, standards, et cetera, it's going to cost us more money to maintain and deal with that pipeline. Basically, they just want this thing to go away. So they went to Love and they said, hey, look, if you, uh, we want you to put $5 million in escrow, we're not going to give it back to you, we're going to keep it in escrow. And because we're going to have to deal with maintaining a pipeline, we're going to leave this in escrow for the next 50 years. And we're going to draw on that money in order to, to maintain the pipeline and, and, and deal with it. So Love's, Love's the site, they want to be there. So what Love's then did was they put a whole new proposal together. And, and revamp it, we can hold it up somehow here. So the best way is, yeah, the best way is probably, yeah, this way right here. We put it up right here. Got it. So what I was proposing now was, these areas right here are green areas. And, and right here is a whole green area. So what they're doing is having traffic, truck traffic come in here. They come all the way around up here. And then into the gas stations. Obviously, there's no pipeline up there, so it's not an issue. So that we'd only be crossing that pipeline in one, two, and three locations. So this now has been set down to, uh, in our pipeline, and they're working through negotiations. So the goal was to do as the least amount of impact as possible over that pipeline. And so that's where they're at right now, and they're communicating with AR. Think of what AR does is they, they set up their budget for each and every year. The development we're going next to the pipeline, they have one year uh, by federal law to upgrade according to what's around that pipeline. They don't like things like just throwing in their loop out of the blue that screws up their whole schedule for the next year or two years. So they're doing everything in their power to just be difficult. But less is a 500 block and roll too. And logistics are going through the roof. And this is the last location before you get into Michigan where there's a truck stop. There's nothing else. You have to go way past New Buffalo to get anything any significant. So Love is pushing forward and working hard on this. And I should have updates from them within the next 30 days of where the negotiations are with AR. But they've got everything in their power to not impact that pipeline and give them access to it uh, with the green space and the easement of that place. Yeah, I guess so. And if this, if this diagram over here now, Love would be right here in, in this area right here. We're now working the back part of this area. Once we cross the bridge over this pipeline, the rest of this game on. Mm -hmm. So back here, we're working on the big focus now has been uh, uh, light manufacturing, uh, warehousing. Uh, I get uh, probably three phone calls a week from the JMR movie factory. That's all, that's all. The warehouse is all filled up. Everything's spreading further and further east, and we're in a logistics hub that's over the top, centrally located. So we want to do one hotel that we want to do ourselves, and then the rest of the property will do uh, manufacturing, large warehousing, and so So I'm hoping that we're going to know what the heck's going on with this sometime uh, end of May 
come in in June. And uh, I'll be able to report back to you and let you know where, where the rates of steel that they are. Fantastic. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. everything is predicated on, on water and sewer, but I know we've got to get to the rocks first before we can really get uh, some steam behind that water and sewer if we get that. Definitely. So we're working on it. I mean, it's been months and months and months. But uh, ANR just, they operate their, their base and they're a 500 pound gorilla with uh, just tons of staff to battle and fight. So we've been talking about this pipeline for. Seems like a couple of years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At what point are they going to put it in their budget for the next year? If they're, it not keeps gonna, they're not going to put it in their budget at all. So they're forced to. So, for example, if I were to put manufacturing or something right here, mm-hmm. next to the pipeline on the easement, they would be forced in one year to upgrade that pipeline. Oh, but they're not. Right. Yeah, right now they're not forced. They think they're being kind by working with Love. Because Love is basically saying, hey, look, we want you to upgrade this pipeline. Before we come in, right, it makes sense. sense. Right. Right. They want our parking lot destroyed, what have you. Mm-hmm. So th- th- that's the goal. So they're a little bit of a driver's seat, too. Federal law says if I have a part of a building right here, they have to upgrade this whole pipeline within one year, period. And they have to put that in their schedule and upgrade their budget. So right now, uh, you know, two powerhouses kind of battling out and trying to come to means. And, and Loves is uh, possibly considering putting up a light manufacturing building for them to rent out. It, it, uh, we it, hope so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's cheaper. So it, 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 I mean, it'd be done. Yeah, it would be done. The full barn up there and have the cat coming into it, the fourth stop right there, and all this goes away. So now I have nothing to come to that. Yeah, is this the same pipeline I see I'm not working on right now on south of 400? In mm-hmm. Michigan City, which is on the county side, uh, this is the same pipeline right out there at the end right of Woodland Ave. Exactly, yeah. the exact same pipeline, and they're working on the exact same pipeline at 49 in Chesterton and the toll road. The same pipeline runs all the way through, and there's a shopping center just built there about a year and a half ago. They're forced to upgrade, and that that shopping center actually goes underneath their parking lot a little bit. So they're, right. they're out in the middle of it. Bean field. Yeah, it looks to me like city. they're changing pipes. They are. They're yeah, trying to the set of pipes in the back. The entire, yeah. some, one or two of them, three pipes in there, of which one or two of them was put in in the 50s, and it needs to be upgraded, period. There's no way around it. So are you still pushing for a hotel besides Golden Lungs? Are you still? Yeah. No, we, we want to do the hotel ourselves. You want to do the hotel yourself? Yeah, we do the hotel ourselves, and then we've got basically another uh, 15 to 20 acres left over, excluding the big pile that's back here, that we can develop and do stuff. We're talking about a couple hundred thousand square feet. Light, 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 light industry or something. Light, light, light manufacturing mm-hmm. and the hotel uh, right there in that corner. So right. we're going to get there. It's going to help with high water. It need water and sewer. We need well, that there. But I also know that you guys need to be watching well, this deal's fine, like done, yeah. and ANR has agreed. All right, and, and then there's no reason to push forward for water and sewer, and you, you've done a ton, right. of, sort of, ton of money into it, and we've preached that a great deal. So hopefully, in the next couple months, we can nail this down. Moses understands very clearly that they're not going to be able to start construction in 2022. As the pipeline gets upgraded, they understand that there's plenty of time frame. Sounds great. Right. Right now, so we can do it in 22 and not 23. Exactly. Exactly, exactly correct. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank, Thank you. We have to see you soon. KIP update, Matt Reardon. When did you say it? Ah, it's not your first name. Yeah, it's your first name. We're going to, um, regarding KAP, we have a request for an easement uh, under our property for a water extension onto Limborg's property for his proposed um, agricultural processing company that helps in the ag business. Um, he's talking about a uh, ammonia processing facility that's used in agriculture. Um, as you guys are well aware, the number one industry in La Park County is agriculture, and um, he had some uh, minor site, uh, specific site location issues to be dealt with uh, uh, by the BZA because of the nature of the operation. He's required to uh, have a a little more heightened uh, response in the M2 zoning. I mean, it's zone for heavy manufacturing, but because of uh, the processes and what it is, he had to get uh, consensus from the local fire department. He's got to get uh, sign-off from the 
uh, the state chemist, I believe is the technical name of that office, that's under the auspices of um, the Indiana Department of Environmental Management. So um, he found out he had some location issues, uh, proximity between a church somewhere out there was within 1,000 feet of the proposed operation. So he's going to move the facility further than 1,000 feet from that operation. Nothing's changed. The pre prior approval from the chemist has not changed. The prior discussions with the fire department haven't changed. The fact that he's going to request an extension to go under, it's him and Kingsbury Utility that are requesting it. So I'm working with Jim Kaminsky and Shaw on that to make sure we got the appropriate legal documentation from his office. We'll be able to do that. And let's go ahead and get the board on record authorizing discussions regarding an easement to, to okay. allow that development to go. Okay. So I would, uh, yeah, I, I was going to say to allow us staff to work through the issues. We got a legal description from uh, Kyle Engineers. We have a map um, we want to put together. We want to make sure that Kingsbury Utility is going to build it the right way. We don't want to hear uh, uh, I guess not want to hear. We uh, we don't want to be exposed to any further long-term potential once the tracks get uh, extended through that easement onto the uh, connected CN. So we need to work through that. Should you get any kind of drawings or something that shows us? Yeah, we just have a, a like I said, I got just I've got seen the email. emails, but yeah, going I back and forth. It sounds like it's in the process. But. In process, we he, I, I got a map. I wasn't really. Um, I just was a, kind of a label, and I wasn't really sure where it went. Kings, you know, Kingsbury is eight thousand acres. I'm like, I gotta have to give me a little context here. So they're gonna do a better job on what they provide to that. So we'll have a legal description and a map that goes with that, and uh, then the cost will be paid for by um, uh, Limburg and uh, their contractual relationship with Kingsbury Utility will handle it. So all the cost of it, so we're not bearing any costs. They're just asking for an easement, and we're going to, I would recommend that we grant them an easement instead of making them pay us for an easement. But it seems like a logical thing to do. It is no cost to the commission, but I, we want to have you at least on record authorizing the uh, staff to go ahead and, and negotiate the terms of that easement if we could. Mm -hmm. So we're not formally approving the easement. We're just allowing them to negotiate. Negotiate. Well, the terms the move and we'll move. Is that in the process of easement? Is that what yeah. you're asking? I, I mean, is it something that? I don't think it's that invasive that it's going to be a problem. It, I would like to be, it's a pipe where, yeah. you know, Hup Road, so on the, uh, I got to get my bearing straight. Um, um, if I'm looking at Hup Road, it's on the right side. They're going to bring a water line underneath over to the other side, and it happens to go through the easement we have for the rail that runs along Hup Road. So in order to get the requisite fire protection to his location, he needs to do that. And so it isn't there today. It's just we want to make sure that as you go forward, any consents, transfers, easements are made of record here so that it later can be retrieved and said, okay, it's part of our minutes that this board authorized an easement. Can you, let's, let's do this. So if we vote to do this, can you at least forward us all kind of a map and a diagram? I mean, it, well, it sounds well, simple. just want to see it so that I can see Absolutely, it. because, again, it's up to them to mm -hmm. go ahead and finalize it and record the documents, and certainly we can get you a copy of the recorded document, the recorded easement, so that you've got it for your files, if that'll help. Mm -hmm. But it'd be nice to see it before it's recorded, because once it's recorded, we're... Well, whatever the board's preference is, we can do that. I mean, if, if you'd like, make your approval subject to seeing the final easement. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And then we can sign up. I, I have a simple question that before we do this point. Since there's so much to be developed there, are we going to run into this fire protection issue on a very consistent basis so that I think it's the unique nature, Mr. Rosenbaum, of this particular development, uh, frankly, the, the, the chemicals that he has out there. Proximity. Well, right. It has to be, yeah. Uh, just to... Uh, I want to make sure I'm understanding. Mm -hmm. Fair question. Right. What happens is you set a precedence, and as we all know, um, somebody else will have chemicals. There's already another plant down there with chemicals. So, you know, it just goes on and on. Yeah, and, and again, that's one of the benefits of KIP, of course. A significant amount of space so that if you've got something, a manufacturing operation that may have potential ignitables or explosives, uh, that's why we've got a pyrotechnics yeah. we're not looking. We're not looking to make it a bigger burden. No, you yeah. know, I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking to make sure that we're going to treat this as a, an exceptional 
situation. Yeah, no, fair question. Uh, but, but certainly, and when it comes back to your question, circling back, you can make it conditional on seeing the final easement before the, the approval. And I guess one other thing, are they going to, are they, this water line is going to go into the tracks, are they going to encase that or put it, slip it so that if they got to replace it, they don't have to? My discussions with Jim Kaminsky, the attorney for uh, uh, Kingsbury Utility, uh, I said, you know, make sure whoever's building whatever is to your specification. So Jim and um, um, uh, Kyle survey and Limborg have been working together to make sure that's correct. We're going to have a meeting next week just to make sure that exact point. We don't want to hear anybody uh, getting upset if uh, utilities are extended and they're like, you broke my utility line. So uh, we're just going to, I mean, for, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we set a precedent that county's flexible and, and granting you an access easement to bring a utility in, number one, especially at their cost. And number two, it's done the right way and the county has no exposure. I mean, pending all those things that you're in the process of doing, I don't, we can do a favorable vote. Mm -hmm. So, Joe, you started this in this yeah, motion. I, I'm not against it at all. I think we should move forward. Uh, I'm with Randy. I think we should get some drawings. So we know what we're really talking about. I'm fine with making that the continuum. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that, yeah. you know, if you started the motion, if you wanted to just you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, we'd like to make the motion to um, support going forward with negotiating uh, the easement uh, to give the staff the, and however, be subject to final review on our part, and that will include needing to know um, some some site design and some more information to make sure it meets the standards of the um, uh, the, the utility, the, the local utility. So imagine the length of your easement for the rail is, which is two miles, maybe, I don't know, off the top of my head. This is 20 feet. So it would be a utility easement just for kids. Again, it's not, we're just... Yep. Just so you can kind of get in your mind what we're talking about. I'll talk about motion. All right. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion in a second, and um, on this, and I, I just want to make sure that whatever they're putting underneath there, because the tracks aren't there right now. Correct. So whatever they put underneath there is going to be, they can access through there without coming in and disrupting. And, and I understood that to be part of your motion. That it's subject to not only the uh, you know the design spec, but it's subject to safety specifications in terms of uh, properly preserving. I mean, we could go on and putting adjectives there, but yes, safety, uh, the, the, the making it so that uh, something like you put a crop, a concrete ground, and then you're using the pipe in between, so this way, if they run something over it, they can run over with the tracks and not disturb the pipe, right. or if the pipe breaks, it doesn't take the whole thing out. The railroad people, see on the sales tracks, they have standards for going on these tracks we should follow. Right. That's right. You don't want the liability in the county if somebody with a driver uh, train across there, and all of a sudden it derailed because they put a pipeline on it. Right. So so protect yourself. And throw a couple of whole harmlesses in there. It's <laughs> 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 legal term. That's right. Very good. Practice of law here. So the, uh, anyway. the goal All right. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. That's the news at Kip. Uh, 39 North. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, company we're working with chose to, to focus on an, an existing building going up as opposed to the 39 North location. That's unfortunate, but they're staying in the county, we believe, so that's good. So we win. It's good. Um, that still doesn't mitigate our challenges at 39 North with Water Tower um, and that ongoing discussion. Um, the documentation that's going into the 39 North EDA grant, um, we've, we've beefed up and working and utilizing a uh, development plan that was generated by Anacostia Rail that uh, – identifies their property is targeted for plus or minus a million square feet in seven different buildings at that location. And um, we provided that information. We extrapolated that data out, um, applying some metrics related to job creation and wages for those particular industries and provided all that information from the EDA. Well, I'm not a gigantic fan of using all this hypothetical data. Um, um, a lot of grants and a lot of 
political decisions and otherwise are made using hypothetical data uh, that should be based on pr uh, previous experiences. So we compile all that and put it into a pretty solid uh, informational uh, letter. So I know Mary Jane's kind of trying to wrap that up. And um, there is also one other note. There's progress on the Senior Living Center. Um, my understanding, uh, they just made a stopover at our office and made Tony aware of the project. Um, they submitted a uh, tax abatement application, uh, and what that has to do with this organization, our, this board, is that this board would uh, review any tax abatements that would go through a redevelopment area. The, there's a purpose for redevelopment districts and allocation areas, and that's to collect new increments for projects. And uh, this may be counter to that effort, uh, provided that there is really with the um, with the uh, Exception of the water tower need, there there hasn't been a lot of uh, there hasn't been a lot of identified at the time when we wrote that plan and going into the future to do anything other than focus on that. Any new increment in a district would could be used to to offset that. So um, that's on RDC decision. Uh, that's for you council people on the you know you guys have to make that decision. Um, it hasn't moved any any uh, much further beyond what we have. So. Uh, that's the status on that, and uh, that's all I have. And the commission needs to know, too, both Matt and Mary Jane uh, have done some great work on getting the CDA application to a point that hopefully it continues to move. Uh, this most recent letter, Matt's being modest about it. I mean, it took a considerable amount to try to put that together. EDA has various requirements about the detail of prospective development. Uh, we're making headway. Uh, again, as you know, it's an 80-20 grant. Um, we, we need to come up, of course, with the local match if, if we're successful, but at least we're, we've gotten traction and we're making headway to hopefully beefing up on that application before the, uh, before the EDA. Thank you. Um, also, just to let you know that the American Rescue Plan allocated additional dollars to EDA, so we're trying to position ourselves to be ready for those additional dollars when they come on board. And there's two meetings coming up where our EDA representative, James Winters, is going to speak. So I plan on listening to both of those. One is at Urban Waters, and the other one is a Zoom meeting at Nursey. If anybody choose, wants to listen to it and um, sign up, it's um, April 22nd is the Nursey um, Zoom meeting on the EDA grant for information. Right. So, yeah, those were on April 1st. Pardon me? I'm just kidding. Ah, joke. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Uh, new business, 3594 TIF update. Plans outlined. We're in a holding pattern until I get specific data from the developer. He's uh, he's doing some other research in other parts of the country right now, also known as, you know, taking a little vacation for himself. Um, he should be back here in, this, in the uh, end of the spring. We'll get that document together for consideration. But... Um, you know, again, it's going to be connecting utilities to these places that are served. It's a pretty common tale that this board is aware of, and it seems to come up time and time again. So um, we're ahead of this, and we're going to make sure we have a good idea what it costs. Um, I also understand that at this time there is a there's a little bit of revenue and, and a lot more process that's been uh, put together with the uh, LaPorte County Water and Sewer District. So they are uh, kind of got their sea legs under them. You know, remember when we started with 421 and 94, they were kind of like, I don't know, should we worry, should we not? I think they're, 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 they've got a couple of projects under their belt where they're, they're going to be, I would like to think, a little more active financial and, and then process participant in this because it's far away from us and, you know, we don't, we don't own those things. So um, with the absent working directly with Michigan City, we're going to run it. We're, again, we're going to run into the same issue. We have another jurisdiction that, that has control of the utilities, but we'd like to see areas served. So I, I would look to see the, the, that board take a bigger role in this, the next plan deal. And that is all I have. Until Thank you. Other business. Thank you. How about? Yeah. What about? Oh, never mind. That's Carl, Carl. Carl. Carl Sender. Would you like to introduce Carl? Yes. I'd like to introduce Carl Sender from Center Company, longtime uh, associate of mine and former work colleague at Crow Chizik to handle the uh, – RDC and your report. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Thank you, man. Take it away, Carl. Good to see you today via Zoom. Uh, in your packet is the annual report of the Redevelopment Commission. The purpose of this report is 
international players can provide the commission as far as and it goes on to both commissioners and the council so they have an opportunity to see the activities of the new development commission for 2020. And so the introduction here just summarizes the, the basics of the purpose of the commission, uh, what your memberships are, your the members are, and then um, moving forward, we have what the tax increment is in 2020. There are a couple uh, minor things we do need to make change. There's a couple of totals that uh, didn't get quite updated, and also the section on the debt on pages uh, four and five, uh, the loan debt got included. So we will swap that out in the next day or two and get that over to Matt and Mary Jane so that. Uh, the final report then can be submitted on to the Council and the Commissioner. Uh, the last section of the report then is really the appendix, is a listing of all the parcels um, for each of the four allocation areas. Um, it shows what the gross assessed value, the net assessed value, the base assessed value, and incremental value. One of the things that we will do following probably next week is to upload um, components of this report, including all the tip parcels are required to be uploaded into the Department of Local Government Finance. I have a website, the Gateway website, um, and it um, requires all the commissions to upload each of the parcels so that uh, the public has access to the new um, these tip parcels uh, by allocation area. So, uh, with that brief overview, I'm happy to answer any questions that the commission may have. Is there any questions for Carl? I guess I have one quick question on the um, fourth on the last page, page number six. Uh, which the I-94, um, 421 TIFs, which one is the one with the um, um, holiday properties there? It's the second one on the, the bottom one. So it's got 226000 but they usually sweep that, and a lot of that money goes back over there. All right. All right. I believe that if the um, fund 4504, Yep. They got it. All right. Thank you, Carl. Do we need to vote to accept your? I think that would be in the order to go ahead and accept the report that the team has done that we'll make. To put in a motion to give Carl's report? Yep. yep. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there any questions? Comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Next item is um, what we added to the agenda. It's resolution number 1-2021. Um, it's you like to read it by title only? What do you want to ask? Yeah. 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 What we just did. The, the, the summary of the resolution just indicates that the Redevelopment Commission will be collecting all new increment debts generated in the district. Um, you pass this every year, and that's what this indicates. So it's an annual thing? Yes, sir. Right. What's your pleasure? Motion to read by title only, then? Motion by title only. Second. Second by Joe. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Could you read the title, please? Yes, sir. Resolution number 1-2021. Resolution of the Port County Redevelopment Commission concerning the 2022 budget year determination for tax increment for the Port County Redevelopment Commission allocation areas. What's your pleasure, gentlemen, ladies? It's weird somebody would make a move. <laughs> I'll make the motion. All right. I'll second it. Motion and a second. Is there any questions or comments? 
Carry down. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. It's fun watching you sweat it. Any other business? No. Yeah, is this where you're circling back? This is indeed where I'm circling back. Yeah, uh, Tony's going to give this report. I just want to chime in before we talk about the grants and Tony's close out of phase two. So the ARP, excuse me, the AARP, um, is the, the latest coronavirus recovery package put out there. Section 603 creates this coronavirus state fiscal recovery fund. Section 603. Counties, LPs, the four county share is 21.3 million. And uh, among the other requirements, such as you can't use money to basically cover your budget shortfalls, and you can't use money for um, um, the retirement funds and pensions, um, they did something interesting and needed. They allowed for uh, to make necessary investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure out of that fund. So um, as a general matter of most things, governmental expenditures, if you have the opportunity to make expenditures in areas that you have a chance to recoup some of the money, I would recommend heading in that direction. So as the commission is well aware of, projects at 421 as well as the project at 39 North have that same opportunity to recoup more tax dollars and create jobs. Not that the other efforts using COVID money previous weren't correct or done appropriately. I'm just stating that this law has an opportunity to, to address things in a fashion that we in the economic development world try and strive after, which is making investments in places you can get money back. So I think that those two, whether it would be full or in part, uh, would be something that I would love for the county council to consider and the commissioners to take a look at. Um, you know, we're going to work with Shaw to try and get some numbers together and power up to make sure that we know what we would be asking for or what, what I would bring back to the commission for a recommendation to request be set aside. Uh, these funds are not the same as other money that is coming to the state, the cities, um, um, the EDA, the pick up an acronym. I mean, they're all getting funded. So um, this also has nothing to do with the exception of uh, you need to spend the money that you have remaining of the previous COVID funds that were available and how that was laid out. So it's pretty straightforward. Spend the money you have, do it appropriately, get more money, put it into, um, you have a chance to put it into road streets, um, um, excuse me, I want to be very specific because that's what it says, water, sewer, and broadband. So um, if anybody wants to read that, it's only like 275 pages. We should indicate, too, where uh, my office is prepared to take to the commissioners an ordinance for consideration at next Wednesday's meeting that will formally set up the American Rescue Plan um, uh, fund, mm -hmm. which we're required to do under the law. Uh, the ordinance will also provide for a collaborative process for the council and commission to work up the plan, you know, utilizing input from a variety of stakeholders as to how you, you all look to uh, spending that. Ultimately, it's the council, of course, that has the final appropriation authority on it. But with 21 million coming in, 10 million of it in the first tranche, which is scheduled within another 30 days uh, to, to be received, it's important that the county continue moving forward. You all be heavily involved in that process so that uh, there is a plan uh, going forward. But you'll see a proposed ordinance coming to the commission this next Wednesday to set up the fund that is required by the American Rescue Plan. One other thing, just to close that out and turn over to Tony, the money needs to be spent by 20, December 31, 2024. So it's not lay around money. This is I fund projects. At, the end, of the, at yeah. the end of the year, it's like yeah. not only. Yeah, yeah, it's like the CARES Act, as you recall, we, we thought initially right. we had to spend all that. Yeah. So. so this is fun projects. You know, I mean, it, let's look at it. They're, you know, what's designed, what's ready to go. Yeah. Not, you know, do you have a bridge job that needs to be done? Is there maintenance that needs to be done in some of the public, uh, publicly owned assets that we have? And so those kind of things. And you can imagine the relief of cities and counties throughout the state because you're talking cash star cities and counties have been ready to, you know, you've got projects ready to go. And finally, with American Rescue Plan funds, we're talking 10 million for the city of LaPorte, 16 million for the city of Michigan City, and 21 million total for LaPorte County. So it's a great opportunity, I think. That's a great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. We should cash in on our one. Fantastic. We will.
Mr. Chairman, and members of the of the commission, good afternoon, and I uh, look forward to being extremely brief. At, at your request, Mr. Chairman, uh, you thought it'd be prudent to provide a closeout summary of the Laporte County Action Fund grant process. That's exactly what this report is that I handed out. Um, it is the fine work of, of our community development specialist, Bailey McGrath, uh, and is a summary of the 40 small business recipients that have put that money to tremendous use at retaining nearly well, 400 plus small business uh, employees. Um, and that is, we, we could not simply be more excited and thankful for you as members of that of that panel that made the consideration of the grant applicants. Uh, we are, our fingers are crossed at this point. Fortunately, uh, you hosted the, the uh, public hearing that kicked off the application for phase three. So our fingers are crossed that we get the support necessary. Uh, we believe that the Office of Community and Rural Affairs is looking to entities that can help them expedite this funding, get into the hands of those that need it most. We want to help them do that. We've demonstrated we can. And this summary, quite frankly, is a, uh, it's a, a necessary obligation of us to put closure to phase two, uh, do it in a very comprehensive way. And, uh, uh, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you, but all of those that played a critical role in uh, making this happen. The state, uh, I, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very, it's extremely noteworthy how many people, not only on the approval side, but uh, all the way through this process, the countless hours that are spent uh, making the communications, the verifications of the total employment, and then following up. And uh, just a last shout out to Mitch Bishop. He and I have spent uh, many an hour making sure that we're, because OPRA has continued to refine this program each time they've reapproved and have graduated to the next phase, they continue to refine programmatic, small programmatic changes. So um, great work. I want to say that to the commissioners, great work to you. Hats off. And it, it can't happen without a successful team. So I wanted to acknowledge your, your efforts, your energies, and let's keep our fingers crossed that we get good news very shortly about phase three. When, is it, when do you anticipate that safe year of players? It is, I believe, uh, mid-April is when we're anticipating an answer. Um, and it's, it's customary that we hear about the same day the state announces that. So we, um, we'll be excited to, we're, we're optimistic, however, uh, very cautiously optimistic at this stage. And, okay, well, thank you. Is this going to add it to the report or the one that we did a few months ago also? This uh, is the second time around? It sure does. This is the culmination of phase two. It's a wrap up and completion of all that phase two work. Well, that's been beneficial to a lot of different small companies and businesses. And yeah. Good job. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you all thank very you. much. Any other new business? Let me just update the commission briefly because, again, part of what this commission wanted when you set them, and, and, and the council set up the Office of Economic Development along with commissioners a few years ago, was to be able to pivot quickly, get information out quickly. I, I received an inquiry from an attorney representing a vertical farming operation weeks ago. And, and I want to compliment our economic development team because they were able to get back to me almost immediately with two prospective sites in our county uh, for this. Uh, and there were a number of, uh, it's, a, it's a Minnesota firm that is looking to locate this operation. That would be 170 good paying jobs, average 35,000 wage, um, and a considerable uh, amount of building under roof. It's now down to two final locations between ourselves and Muncie, uh, between a location in the city of LaPorte and Muncie. I would say as well that the team has developed an ongoing great communication with the economic development teams both in, in both cities so that we were able to turn around, get good, timely responses to this request, get us in the hunt, 
as far as we can tell, and I've received a, uh, a call from the attorney for the developer today. Again, it's a uh, lo location in the county along with a location in Muncie. We're going to try to get additional information from city economic development officials to see what else we need to do to tweak the deal to make it attractive to this developer. But uh, hats off to our economic development team who turned that around immediately. Uh, they're on call 24-7. I says, I need sites now, and, and they did it. Uh, they got it to us, and we were able to get it to the attorney for the developer, and let's keep our fingers crossed. It was down to the final two sites, and we'll keep everybody advised on how that's coming. Well, that was great. Great. Right. Thank you. Any other business? Person to adjourn? You have a motion? So we'll start. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Meetings adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>